Hello everyone, happy to another First Chapter Friday. It is The Confessions of Georgia Nicholson, Angus Thongs and Full Front Snogging, and it's by Louise Renison. All right, so this is a book that is um, from the perspective of a British teenager and by all rights I should be doing it with a British accent but I am unable to do that well and I don't want to offend anyone so I will do it in my poor American accent. There are six things very wrong with my life. One, I have one of those under the skin spots that will never come to a head but will lurk in a red way for the next two years. It is number two, on my nose. Number three, I have a three-year-old sister who may have peed somewhere in my room. Number four, in 14 days, the summer halls will be over and then it will be back to Stalag 14 and Uberfer, Frau Simpson and her bunch of sadistic teachers. Number five, I am very ugly and I need to go to an ugly home. Number six, I went to a party dressed as a stuffed olive. A note from Georgia. Hello, American type chums. Perhaps you say howdy in America? I don't know, but then I'm not really sure where Tibet is either for my lipstick. I'm writing this special message to you from my bedroom in England. Here is my nubbin thrust. Apparently, American people are not English. This means you may not always understand what I am going on about in this book. Well, join the club, I say. How do you think I feel? I am me and I don't know what I'm going about on half the time. However, for your benefit, I have put in a glossary at the back of the book that will explainish things, things like nudie pants and tosser. I hope you like my diary and don't hold it against me that my great 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 grandparents colonized you. Not just the two of them, obviously. Georgia. I'm going to do as a first chapter, since this is in diary form, a month. And this month is August. August La Marche avec Mystery. Sunday, August 23rd. My bedroom raining 10 a.m. Dad had Uncle Eddie round, so naturally they had to come and see what I was up to. If Uncle Eddie, who is bald as a coot, says to me one more time, should bald heads be buttered, I may kill myself. He doesn't seem to realize that I am no longer wearing romper suits. I feel like yelling at him. I'm 14 years old, Uncle Eddie. I am bursting with womanhood. I wear a bra. Okay, it's a bit on the loose side and it does ride up around my neck if I run for the bus. But the womanly potential is there, you bald coot. Talking of breasts, I'm worried that I may end up like the rest of the women in my family with just the one bust, sort of like a, a shelf affair. Mom can balance things on hers when her hands are full at parties and so on. She can have a sandwich and a drink and save a snack for later by putting it on her shelf. It's very unattractive. I would like a proper amount of breastiness, but not go too far with it like Melanie Andrews, for instance. I got the most awful shock in the showers after hockey last term. Her bra looked like two shopping bags. I suspect she's a bit unbalanced hormonally. She certainly is when she tries to run for the ball. I thought she'd run right through the fence with the momentum of her bazoomers, as Jazz so amusingly calls them. Still in my room, still raining, still Sunday, 11.30 a.m. I don't see why I can't have a lock on my bedroom door. Every time I suggest anything around this place, people start shaking their heads and tutting. It's like living in a house full of chickens dressed in frocks and trousers, or a house full of those nodding dogs, or a house full of... Anyway, I can't have a lock on my door, is the short and short of it. Why not? I ask Mum reasonably. 
catching her in one of the rare moments when she's not at an Italian evening class or in a party. Because you might have an accident and we couldn't get in, she said. An accident? Like what? I persisted. Well, you might faint. Ugh. Then Dad joined in. You might set fire to your bed and be overcome with fumes. What is the matter with people? I know why they don't want me to have a lock on my door. It's because it would be the first sign of my path to adulthood, and they can't bear the idea of that because it would mean they might have to get on with their own lives and leave me alone. Still Sunday, 11.35 a.m. There are six things very wrong with my life. I have already mentioned them, so I will skip ahead. 11.40 a.m. Okay, that's it. I am turning over a new leaf. I found an article in Mum's Cosmo about how to be happy if you're very unhappy, which I am. The article is called Emotional Confidence. What you have to do is recall, experience, and heal. So you think of a painful incident and you remember all the ghastly details of it. This is the recall bit. Then you experience the emotions and acknowledge them, and then you just let it go. 2 p.m. Uncle Eddie has gone, thank the Lord. He actually asked me if I'd like to ride in the sidecar on his motorbike. Huh, are all adults from the planet Exnon? What should I have said? Oh, yes, certainly, Uncle Eddie. I would like to go in your pre-war sidecar. With a bit of luck, all of my friends will see me in some mad, bald bloke, and that'll be the end of my life. Thank you. 4 p.m. Jazz came round. She said it took her ages to get out of her cat suit after the fancy dress party. I wasn't very interested, but I asked her why out of politeness. She said, well, the boy behind the counter in the fancy dress shop was really good looking. Yes, so? Well, so I lied about my size. I got a size 10 cat suit instead of a 12. She showed me the marks around her neck and waist. They were quite deep. I said, your head looks a bit swollen up. Oh no, that's just Sunday. Jess. I told her about the Cosmo article, so we spent a few hours recalling the fancy dress party, i.e. the painful incident, and experiencing the emotions in order to heal them. I blame Jazz entirely. It might have been my idea to go as a stuffed olive, but she didn't stop me, like a pal should. In fact, she encouraged me. We made the stuffed olive costume out of chicken wire and green crepe paper. That was for the olive bit. It had little shoulder straps to keep it up, and I wore a green t-shirt and green tights underneath. It was the stuffed bit that Jazz helped with mostly. As I recall, it was she who suggested I use crazy color to dye my hair and head and face and neck red, sort of like a pimento. It was, I have to say, quite funny at the time. Well when we were in my room. The difficulty came when I tried to get out of my room. I had to go down the stairs sideways. When I did get to the door, I had to go back and change my tights because my cat Angus had one of his Call of the Wild episodes. He really is completely bonkers. We got him when we were on holiday at Loch Lomond. On the last day, I found him wandering around the garden of the guest house we were staying in. Terry a wee while, it was called. That should have given you some idea what the holiday was like. I should have guessed all was not entirely well in the cat department when I picked him up and he began savaging my cardigan. But he was such a lovely looking kitten, all tabby and long haired, with huge yellow eyes. Even as a kitten, he looked like a small dog. I begged and I pleaded to take him home. He'll die here, mummy. He has no mummy or daddy, I said plaintively. My dad said, he's probably eaten them. Honestly, he can be a bit callous. I worked on mum, and in the end, I brought him home. The Scottish landlady did say that she thought he was probably a mixed breed, 
half domestic tabby and half Scottish wildcat. I remember thinking, oh, that will be exotic. I didn't realize that he would grow to be the size of a small Labrador, only mad. I used to drag him around on a lead, but as I explained to Mrs. Next Door, he ate it. Anyway, sometimes he hears the call of the Scottish Highlands. So as I was passing by, as a stuffed olive, he leaped out from his concealed hiding place behind the curtains, or his lair, as I suppose he imagined it in his little cat brain, and he attacked my tights, or prey. I couldn't break his hold by banging his head because he was darting from side to side. In the end, I managed to reach the outdoor broom by the door and I beat him off with it. Then I couldn't get into Dad's Volvo. Dad said, why don't you take off the olive bit and we'll stick it in the boot. Honestly, what's the point, I said. Dad, if you think I'm sitting next to you in a green t-shirt and tights, you're mad. He got all shirty like parents do as soon as you point out how stupid and useless they are. Well, you'll just have to walk then. I'll drive along really slow with Jazz, and you walk alongside. I couldn't believe it. If I have to walk, why don't you and Jazz and I both walk there and just forget about the car? He got that tight-lipped look that dads get when they think they're being reasonable. Because I want to be sure of where you're going. I don't want you out wandering the streets at night. Unbelievable, I said. What would I be doing, walking the streets at night as a stuffed olive? <laughs> a gate-crashing cocktail parties? Jazz smirked, but Dad got all outraged parenty. Don't you speak to me like that. Otherwise, you won't go out at all. <sighs> What's the point? When we did eventually get to the party, me walking next to Dad's Volvo driving at five miles an hour, I had a horrible time. Everyone laughed at first, but then more or less ignored me. In a mood of defiant stuffed oliveness, I did have a dance by myself, but things kept crashing out to the floor around me. The host asked if I wouldn't mind sitting down. I had a go at that, but it was also useless. In the end, I was at the gate for about an hour before Dad arrived, and I did stick the olive bit in the boot. We didn't speak on the way home. Jazz, on the other hand, had a great time. She said she was surrounded by Tarzans and Robin Hoods and James Bonds. Boys have a very vivid imagination. Not. I was feeling a bit moody as we did the recall bit. I said bitterly, well, I could have been surrounded by boys if I hadn't been dressed as an olive. Jazz said, Georgia, you thought it was funny, and I thought it was funny. But you have to remember that boys don't think of girls that they're for funniness. She looked annoyingly wise and mature. What the hell did she know about boys? God! She had an annoying fringe. Shut up, Fringy. I said, Oh yeah, so that's what they want, is it, boys? They want some simpering girly whirlies in cat suits? Through my bedroom window, I could see next door's poodle leaping up and down our fence, yapping. It would be trying to scare off our cat, Angus. <laughs> Fat chance. Jazz was going on and on wisely. Yes, they do. I think they do like girls who are a bit soft and not well... You know, she was zipping up her rucksack. I looked at her. Not so what, I asked. She said, I have to go. We have an early supper. As she left my room, I knew I should shut up. But you know when you should shut up because you really should just shut up. But you keep going on and on anyway. Well, I had that. Go on. Not so what, I insisted. She mumbled something as she went down the stairs. I yelled at her as she went through the door. Not so like me, you mean, don't you? 11 p.m. I can already feel myself getting fed up with boys and I haven't had anything to do with them yet. Midnight. Oh God, please, please don't make me have to be a lesbian like 
Harry, Kate, or Miss Stamp? 12.10 a.m. What do lesbians do anyway? Monday, August 24th, 5 p.m. Absolutely no phone calls from anyone. I may as well be dead. I'm going to have an early night. 5.30 p.m. Libby came in and squiggled into bed with me, saying, Ha 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 ha! For so long, I had to get up. She's so nice, although a bit smelly. At least she likes me and doesn't mind if I have a sense of humor. 7 p.m. Ellen and Julia rang from a phone box. They took turns to speak in French accents. We're going for a mystery walk tomorrow or a La Marche avant mystery. And I have no idea how to say that properly in French. 10.30 p.m. Have to put on a face mask made from egg yolk just in case we see any Le Gargons, gorgeous, gorgeous boys, on our walk. Tuesday, August 25th, 9 a.m. Woke up and thought my face was paralyzed. It was quite scary. My skin was all tight and stiff, and I couldn't open my eyes properly. Then I remembered the egg yolk mask. I must have fallen asleep reading. I don't think I'll go to bed early again. It makes my eyes go all puffy. I look like there's a touch of Asian in my family. Sadly, not the case. The nearest we have to anything exotic influence is Auntie Kath, who can sing Chinese, but only after a couple pints of wine. 11 a.m. Arranged to rendezvous with the Ellen and Julia at the Whiteleys so that we can start our La Marge avec mystery. We agreed that we would dress sports casual, so I am wearing ski trousers, ankle boots, and a black top with a roll neck with a PVC jacket. I'm going for the young Bridget Bardot look, which is a shame as I am A, nothing like her, and B, I haven't got blonde hair, which, as we all know, is her trademark. I would have blonde hair if I was allowed, but honestly, it's like a play school at my house. My dad has got the mentality of a Teletubby, only not so developed. I had said to mom, I'm going to dye my hair blonde. What product would you recommend? And she pretended not to hear me and went on dressing Libby. But dad went ballistic. You're 14 years old. You've only had that hair for 14 years and you want to change it already? How bored are you going to be with it by the time you're 30? What color will you be up to by then? Honestly, he makes little sense these days. I said to mom, oh, I thought I could hear a voice squeaking and making peculiar noises, but I was mistaken. Ta-ta, FN. As I ran for the door, I heard him shouting, I suppose you think being sarcastic and applying eyeliner in a straight line will get you some O-levels? O-levels, I ask you. He's a living reminder of the Stone Age. Noon. La Marche avec mystery. We walked up and down the high street, only speaking French. I asked passerbys for directions. We start, oh, so sorry. S'il vous plaît, and au sacros jubel ma tete, I don't know. Moi, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> Obviously, she said it better than I did. Then, this is really, then, this really dishy bloke came along. Julia and Ellen wouldn't go up to him but I did. I don't know why, but I had developed a limp as well as just being French. He had really nice eyes. He must have been about 19. Anyway, I hobbled up to him and I said, excusez-moi, je suis Francaise. Je ne parle pas anglais. Parlez-vous Francois? I don't know. Forgive me. Fortunately, he looked puzzled. It was quite dreamy. I pouted my mouth a bit. Cindy Crawford said that if you put your tongue behind your back teeth when you smile, it makes your smile really sexy. Impossible to talk, of course, unless you don't mind sounding like a loony. Let's see. Put your tongue behind the back of your teeth when you smile. Mm, nah, not doing it for me. Anyway, Dreamboat said, Are you lost? I don't speak French. I looked puzzled and pouty. Oh, so close, monsieur, I breathed. 
He took my arm. Look, don't be frightened. Come with me. Ellen and Jules looked amazed. He was bloody gorgeous, and he was taking me somewhere. I hobbled along attractively by his side, not for very long, though, just into a French pastry, where the lady behind the counter was French. 8 p.m. In bed, the French woman talked French at me for about 40 years. I nodded for as long as humanly possible, and then just ran out of the shop and into the street. The gorgeous boy looked surprised that my limp had cured itself so quickly. I really will have to just dye my hair now if I ever want to go shopping in this town again. Wednesday, August 26, 11 a.m. I have no friends, not a single friend. No one has rung. No one has come round. Mom and Dad have gone to work. Libby is at play school. I may as well be dead. Perhaps I am dead. I wonder how you would know. If you died in your sleep and woke up dead, who would let you know? It could be like that in the film where you can see everyone, but they can't see you because you're dead. Oh, I've really given myself the creeps now. I'm going to put on a really loud CD and dance about. Noon. Now I'm still freaked out, but also tired. If I did die, I wonder if anyone would really care. Who would come to my funeral? Mom and Dad, I suppose. They'd have to, as it's mostly their fault that I was depressed enough to commit suicide in the first place. Why couldn't I have a normal family, like Julia and Ellen? They've got normal brothers and sisters. Their dads have normal beards and sheds. My mom won't let my dad use our shed since he left his fishing maggots in there and it became Blue Bottle Headquarters. When the electrician came because the fridge had blown up, he said to Mum, What madman wired up this fridge? Is there someone you know who really doesn't like you? And Dad had done the wiring. Instead of DIY, he talks about feelings and stuff. Why can't he be a real dad? It's pathetic in a grown man. I don't mean I want to be like an old-fashioned woman, you know, all lacy and the man is all tight-lipped and never says anything even though he's got a brain tumor. I want my boyfriend, provided God willing I'm not a lesbian, to be emotional, but only about me. I want him to be like Darcy in Pride and Prejudice, although having said that, I have seen him in other things like Fever Pitch, and he's not so sexy out of the frilly shirts and tights. Anyway, I'll never have a boyfriend because I am too ugly. 2 p.m. Looking through the old family albums, I'm not really surprised I'm ugly. The photos of Dad as a child are terrifying. His nose is huge. It takes up half of his face. In fact, he is literally just a nose with legs and arms attached. 10 p.m. Libby woke up, and she insists on sleeping in my bed. It's quite nice, although she does smell a bit on the hamsterish side. Midnight. The tunnel of love dream that I've just had, where this gorgy bloke is carrying me through the warm waters of the Caribbean? Turns out, it was Libby's wet pajamas on my leg. Change bed. Libby not a bit bothered, and in fact slaps my hand and calls me a bad boy when I change her pajamas. Thursday, August 27th, 11 a.m. I've started worrying about what to wear for first day back at school. It's only 11 days away now. I wonder how much natural makeup I can get away with. Concealer is okay. I wonder about mascara. Maybe I should just dye my lashes. I hate my eyebrows. I say eyebrows, but in fact, it's just the one eyebrow right along my forehead and I might have to do some radical plucking, if I can find Mum's tweezers. She hides things from me now, because she says that I never replaced them. I'll have to rummage around in her bedroom. 1 p.m. Prepared a light lunch of sandwich spread and milky coffee. There's never anything to eat in this house. No wonder my elbows stick out so much. 2 p.m. Found the tweezers eventually. Why Mum would think I wouldn't find them in Dad's tie drawer, I really don't know. I did find something very strange in the tie drawer, as well as the tweezers. It was sort of an apron thing in a special box. I hope against hope that my dad is not a transvestite. 
It would be more than flesh and blood could stand if I had to understand his feminine side. And me and Mom and Libby had begun to watch while he clattered around in one of Mummy's nighties and fluffy mules. We'd probably have to start calling him Daphne. God, it's painful plucking. I'll have to make a little lie down. Ugh, the pain is awful. It's made my eyes water like mad. 2.30 p.m. I can't bear this. I've only taken about five hairs out and my eyes are swollen to twice their normal size. 4 p.m. Cracked it. I'll use Dad's razor. 4.05 p.m. Sharper than I thought. It's taken off a lot of hair in just one stroke. I'll have to even up the other one. 4.16 p.m. Bugger it. It looks all right, I think, but I look very surprised in one eye. I'll have to even up the other one now. 6 p.m. Mum nearly dropped Libby when she saw me. Her exact words were, What in the name of God have you done to yourself, you stupid girl? Ugh, I hate my parents. Me, stupid? They're so stupid. She wishes I was still Libby's age so she could dress me in ridiculous hats with ear flaps and ducks on. God, God, God. 7 p.m. When Dad came in, I could hear them talking about me. Mumble, mumble, she looks like mumble, mumble from Mum. Then I heard Dad, she what? Well, mumble, mumble, grumble, stamp, stamp, bang, bang on the door. Georgia, what have you done now? I shouted from under the blankets. He couldn't get in because I put a chest of drawers in front of the door. At least I'm a real woman, he said through the door. What in the name of the ass is that supposed to mean? Honestly, he can be so crude. 10 p.m. Maybe they'll grow back overnight. How long does it take for eyebrows to grow? Friday, August 28th, 11 a.m. Eyebrows haven't grown back. 11.15 a.m. Jazz phoned and wants to go shopping. There's some new makeup that looks so natural, you can't tell you have any on. I said, do they have eyebrows? She said, why? What do you mean? Do you mean false eyelashes? I said, no, I mean eyebrows. You know, the hairy bits above the eyes? Honestly, friends can be thick. Of course they don't have eyebrows. Everyone's got eyebrows. Why would you need a spare pair? I said, I haven't got any anymore. I shaved them off by mistake. She said, I'm coming around now. Don't do anything until I get there. Noon. When I opened the door, Jazz just looked at me like I'm an alien. You look like an alien, she says. She really is a dim friend. It's more like having a dog than a friend, actually. 6 p.m. Jazz has gone. Her idea of help was to draw some eyebrows on with eyeliner pencil. Obviously, I'm going to have to stay in now forever. 7 p.m. Dad is annoying me so much. He just comes to the door, looks in, and laughs. And then he goes away for a bit. He brought Uncle Eddie upstairs for a look. What am I, a daughter or a fairground attraction? Uncle Eddie said, never mind. If they don't grow back, you and I can go into showbiz. We could do a double act doing impressions of billiard balls. Oh, how I laughed. Not. 8 p.m. The only nice person is Libby. She was stroking where my eyebrows used to be, and then she went off and brought me a lump of cheese. Great, now I've become a rat woman. I wonder who our form teacher will be. Pray God it's not Hawkeye Heaton. I don't want her to be constantly reminding me of unfortunate locust incident. Who would have thought a few locusts could eat so much in a little time? When I let them out in the biology lab for a bit of a fly around, I wouldn't have expected them to eat all the curtains. Strikes me that Hawkeye has very little sense of humor. She is also about a hundred in Miss, which speaks volumes in my book. Mind you, as a rat woman, I'll probably end up as a teacher of biology in some poxy girl school, like her, having cats and warm milk, wearing huge knickers, listening to the radio, being interested in things. I may as well kill myself. I would if I could be bothered, but I'm too depressed. Saturday, August 29th, 10 a.m. 
M and D went out to town to buy stuff. Mom said, did I want her to buy some school shoes for me? I glanced meaningly at her shoes. It's sad that someone of her mature years tries to keep up with us young ones. You'd think she'd be ashamed to be mutton dressed as lamb, but no. I could see her knickers when she sat down the other day, and I wasn't the only one. 11 a.m. Phone rang. Ellen and Julia and Jazz are coming around after they've been to town. Apparently, Jazz has been seen someone in a shop who she really likes. I suppose this is what life will be like for me. Never having a boyfriend, always just living through others. Noon. I was glancing through Just 17 and it listed kissing techniques. What I don't understand is how do you know when to do it? And how do you know which side to go on? You don't want to be bobbing around like pigeons for hours, but I couldn't tell much from the photos. I wish I'd never read, read it. It has made me more nervous and confused than I was before. Still, why should I care? I'm going to be staying in for the rest of my life, unless some gorgeous boy loses his way and wanders into my street, then finds his way up the stairs into my bedroom with a blindfold on. I'm stuck between these four walls forever. 12.15 p.m. Perhaps I can't go out. I might as well use my time wisely. I may tidy my room and put all my dresses in one part of my wardrobe and so on. 12.17 p.m. I hate housework. 12.18 p.m. If I marry, or as is more likely, become a high-flying executive lesbian, I'm never going to do housework. I will have to have an assistant. I have no talent for tidying. Mom thinks that I deliberately ignore the obvious things, but the truth is, I can't tell the difference between tidy and not tidy. When Mom says, will you just tidy up the kitchen? I look around and I think, well, there's a few pans on the side and so on, but I think it looks okay. And then the row begins. 2 p.m. Putting the coffee on for the girls. It's instant, but if you mix the coffee with sugar in the cup for ages, it goes into a sort of paste, and then you can add water, and it's like an espresso. It makes your arms ache, though. 7 p.m. Brilliant afternoon. We all try different makeups. I've been cellotaping my fringe to make it longer and straighter, and to cover up the space where my eyebrows were. Jazz said it makes you look like you've escaped from the funny lad's home. Ellen says if I emphasize my mouth and eyes, then attention will be drawn away from my nose. So it's heavy lippy for me now on. We were all lolling about on my bed listening to the top 40, and Jazz told us about the gorgeous boy in the shop. She knows he's called Tom because someone called him Tom in the shop that he works in. Such a super sleuth. We all pledged that we would wait until I can go out again, and then we will go look and talk to him. Talk then turned to kissing. Ellen said, I went to a Christmas party at my cousin's last year, and this boy from Liverpool was there. I think he was a sailor. Anyway, he was 19 or something, and he brought some mistletoe, and he kissed me. We were full on attention wise. I said, what was it like? Ellen said, a bit on the wet side, a sort of warm jelly feeling. Jazz said, did he have his lips closed or open? Ellen thought a bit, a bit open. I asked, did his tongue pop out? Ellen said, no, just his lips. I wanted to know what she did with her tongue. Well, I just sort of left it where it normally is. I persisted, what about your teeth? Ellen was a bit exasperated. Oh yeah, I just took those out. I looked a bit hurt. You know, like I was only asking. She said, I can't really remember. It was a bit tickly and it didn't last long, but I liked it, I think. He was quite nice, but he has a girlfriend and I suppose he thought that I was just a little 13 year old who hasn't been around much. I said, he was right. 10 p.m. My sister Libby kisses me on the mouth quite a lot, but I don't think sisters count, unless I'm a lesbian, in which case I guess it's all good practice probably. 11 p.m. Through my curtains I can see a big yellow moon. 
I'm thinking of all the people in the world who will probably be looking at the same moon. I wonder how many of them haven't got any eyebrows. Sunday, August 30th, 11 a.m. Thank God they're all actually going out. At last! What is all this happy family nonsense? All this we should do things as a family? As I pointed out to Dad, we are four people who, through great misfortune, happen to be stuck in the same house. Why make it worse by hanging around in garden centers or going for a walk together? Anyway, Rat Woman does not go out. She just hangs around in her bedroom for the next 40 years to avoid being laughed at by strangers. I will never, ever have a boyfriend. It's not fair. There are some really stupid people and they get boyfriends. Zoe Ball gets really nice boyfriends and she's got sticky out ears. 1 p.m. I still haven't tackled Dad about his apron. 1.15 p.m. God, I'm bored. I can see Mr. and Mrs. next door in their greenhouse. What do people do in them? If I end up with someone like Mr. next door, I will definitely kill myself. He has the largest bottom I've ever seen. It amazes me that he can get it in the greenhouse. One day, his bottom will be so large, he will have to live in a greenhouse and have bits of food passed to him and so on. Oh, quel dommage, sacre bleu, les grosses monsieur dans la maison de glace. Sorry about that. 1.20 p.m. I may start a neighborhood newspaper. 1.22 p.m. Oh dear, I have just seen Angus hunkering down in the long grass. He's stalking their poodle. I'll have to intervene in order to avert a massacre. Oh, it's okay. Mrs. Next Door has thrown a brick at him. 11 p.m. What a long and boring day. I hate Sundays. They are deliberately invented by people who have no life and no friends. On the plus side, I've got six o'clock shadow on the eyebrow front. And that's just August. Her story continues, as it says here, it's about her cat, Angus, thongs, there's something that happens at school, and full frontal snogging, which is British for kissing. So anyways, it's lots of high drama and reactions, and they've made a movie out of it that was quite well done and accurate to the book. I hope you check that out, and I hope you have a, a great rest of your vacation week. Take care and enjoy the sunshine. Bye now.